Continuing my quest to follow through humanity's development through history, I've now completed a few basic flint tools, ceramics, and some native copper tools. Next up, it's time to start building some more major projects using these base tools I've now constructed, specifically a bow and arrow and a dugout canoe. And for that, the first major challenge I'm gonna face is needing to cut some pretty sizable trees. So while I was making flint and copper tools, I had Annalise working on a second type of stone tool that became common later after chipped flint tools, but shortly before humanity started to use copper, a salt or ground stone ax. Becoming popular in the Neolithic era sometime around 10,000 BCE, they proved to be a powerful tool for felling trees and clearing land. A bit more time consuming to produce, they are made by grinding a stone into a blade shape rather than chipping it, offering a more resilient cutting tool. But first, I need to find the perfect tree for my bow. So we're on the hunt right now for a good tree for the bow. There's a few different options. Hickory would probably be ideal for this area. Otherwise there's elm, ash, maple. Any of those would probably be a decent bow. Preferably fairly straight without many knots to cut down. Got my copper ax, copper adds. Speaking of ads, time for a plug from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. It's a new mobile RPG game. Raid Shadow Legends is the new mobile RPG game. It's a lot of fun, very immersive, easy to play, and it's great. But they got five minutes or five hours, depending on what you got going on in the day, how many trees you got to cut down. In the game, you assemble your crew and head into battle. Each victory wins you more silver and opportunities to strengthen your champions or add new ones. This game is fun to play, has amazing graphics, and tons of different battles and campaigns to choose from. Plus, it has a really helpful automated feature so you can focus on building your clans, but let them do all the fighting themselves. The game also has big plans for updates in the next six months you can check out in the roadmap. A whole new faction, take team arena feature, and a new clan boss you'll be able to fight. To help out the channel, download the game for free. The link is below in the description, and you'll get 50,000 free silver and a free epic champion. So check it out. Now let's find a tree to cut down. On the hunt looking for a bow. Really? What were you going to say before about it? <laughs> you just find money? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I thought I had a lot of money. <laughs> That's... Dude, split it with me. <laughs> it's like 75 bucks. Just don't. <laughs> they say money goes to grow on trees. It's just, just right there. <laughs> it's just $75 in cash and a fishing pole. I don't know, is this like a trap? <laughs> what? It's a weird forest we're in. All right, so we just gained an anonymous $75 patron. So thanks for that. Well, I finished my hunt for the perfect tree. Let's see how Annalise is doing on the stone ax. I'm gonna take this rock and turn it into an ax. I'll be using a pecking and grinding method with these hammer stones and this granite rock. I'm gonna hopefully shape this edge into a 45 degree angle that will turn it into an ax head once we put it in a handle. copper being such a soft metal, I'm a little skeptical my tools are going to be adequate. So if they prove to be ineffective, this should be a good backup. I've ground down the stone into a axe head. I used it to cut the end here and it worked pretty good. All right, so I went around the forest trying to find an ideal tree for a bow and came across this elm, which looks really promising. Super straight. It's got a few small knots, but not many. It's fairly thick. I think about six inches in diameter, which should give us enough material to make a few different staves from, potentially make a few bows. The real challenge is gonna be cutting it down now because it's pretty big and I only have copper tools to use. This blade is about the same size as Otzi's, which is noted for being a pretty effective tool for the arrows in. I have my doubts how well it'll work for actually cutting down a tree. And as a backup, I have Annalise making a stone ax that might work better. A little bit awkward. Crooked, it makes it hard to swing accurately. Doing pretty good, but it's pretty slow. The biggest issue I'm running into is just the integrity of the actual tools I made. It's starting to bend outward. I think that's because the stick was not a complete 90. It's up a little bit, so when I strike it, it pushes it and causing it to fall apart. So I wish I had been able to find some better sticks 
probably would have gotten a better result with this. So we take it back, retune them, and hopefully get a little bit better results. I don't like half an inch. So now I'm going to create the hole in this half for the axe head to fit in. I've started it with this piece of flint to make this notch and I'll just put an ember in this and then keep feeding it oxygen until it burns all the way through and I'll have the start of a hole that I can then continue to widen until the stone axe head fits. I'm just chipping out the burnt stuff. So it took a couple hours, but I've burned through the log, and now I just need to focus on getting the uh, hole wide enough for the rock to fit in. But there's a herd of turkeys, and I'm gonna go chase them first. <laughs> We're gonna go chase turkeys? What are the turkeys? They're over there. Turkeys! I love turkeys, they're so dumb. I'm gonna catch this one, Dan. Let him go! Wanna go chase him, Dan? I'll hold the camera. No. So just gently bother a flock of turkeys, but don't hurt them. All right, I have managed to burn all the way through the log now. So I'll just keep using uh, embers to burn out the rest of the hole until the rock fits. And then once I wedge it in, we'll have an ax. Oh, I keep losing my rock. So now we have an ax. Introducing a stick 2.0. It's bigger, it's straighter, and it's stronger. A little bit more support for the blade, so it should hopefully not move as much. And I took a suggestion from the comments of adding some charcoal to the pine pitch and make it more of a glue, so hopefully that holds a little bit stronger. It's working. Easier to swing. And for reference, I brought the flint. I'll show what that would look like. Got this bit that is still a little sharp. Yeah, so it's very slow. Definitely improvement, so we aren't going backwards. Can't do it. Let's start a new tree. This one just doesn't want to go. Ah, got it. Oh, that was a lot of work. At the same time, a lot easier than expected. A good stick makes a huge difference. Can't believe I cut that with just a piece of copper. That was surprisingly effective. I have a lot more respect for Otzi. He's got a, he's got a pretty good tool. After cutting the tree with copper in a little over an hour, I tried out Annalise's stone axe next to cut it to size. Hell oh, <laughs> All right, stick broke. I just have to finish it by hand and uh, see how long that takes and make a new stick later. So far it seems to be working pretty good though. This might slow down a bit. There we go. Got it. Whew. With the upcoming bow project, some more tools I'll need are a few sets of wedges to help split the log. 
So I took a few more pieces of the flow copper we got in Michigan and cold worked them and sharpened them into some rough wedges. Oh, I cracked the rock. <laughs> oh no! Next up, I need to get the tree for my dugout canoe. In preparation, I've seen that this process can be incredibly slow going, even with modern steel tools, which I don't have. However, I think there are two important things that I can do that should hopefully speed up the process. First, using a dead and dried tree instead of a freshly cut one, so that it'll burn easily and I can let the fire do the majority of the work. And by not being overly ambitious on the size of my canoe. For my inspiration, I'm pulling from what is believed to be the oldest dugout canoe, the Pesa Canoe, made from a Scots pine around 8000 BCE, which is roughly 17 inches in diameter. Trying to find a tree with these exact parameters was a bit of a challenge, but eventually found a really good candidate up near Duluth. Okay, we're up at my brother's property and he has his down pine tree that is probably the best candidate we've been able to find for a possible dugout canoe. It blew down in a windstorm a few years ago and has been drying out since and hopefully is not rotten too much. So we're gonna delimb the tree, cut it to size, drop it down, split off the top third, and start burning. Hope we can do it with the tools we have. I'm gonna hit it with a stick. Good plan. Oh wow, that one takes a bite. I think that's holding. <laughs> Still might be better than the copper actually. Just cause it's getting deep chunks. Yes. All right, so the hole is a little too big so the rock kept falling out. There's a little piece of wood in there and uh, seems to be doing the trick. So hopefully the rest of the wood doesn't break. And uh, this is actually working out pretty good. I think it's doing better than the copper is just because I can get a lot more of a swing. It's got a lot more weight, so you get a lot more penetration and take out some deeper cuts. So uh, don't age, not too bad. Oh, did we get a crack? <sighs> it cuts well, but not super deep. I think this guy's holding it up. If I cut it out, I put a little bit, just enough pressure on it to snap it, hopefully. I feel like it's really close. I don't want to get too close and have it snap unexpectedly because it's a lot of weight that could kill somebody. So let's see if this does it. I want to move further away. Move just a little bit more. Oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> it fell over. All right. Now to debark it. Oh. 
tossed a piece of the rock. Uh, bug. Oh, there's that in there. All right, so it took pretty much all day. I finally got the tree down. Got a good way through it with the copper and the stone. Still not really sure if copper or stone works better. It seems the handle makes a huge difference and the handle on one needs some improvement. It broke off. The copper is pretty sharp and it can cut, but it can't go super deep. So uh, I'm still not certain which one is actually better. But we got through and now we have the log ready to be turned into a boat. We debarked it. Got started trying to split it with some of the wedges I made, but they uh, not splitting too well. I think it's a little too wet. Just gonna let it dry out the next week. Come back, split it, start a fire, and burn our way through. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.